Hello, everyone. Hello. Anyways. All right, should we get started? Go for it. I'll keep admitting people when they come. Okay. So hi, everyone. Thank you for coming to Clearing the Air. This is the first event that the Calgary Indigenous STEAM Students Association is hosting. I'm Jasmine. I'm the founder and president of CISA. And I'm really excited to see so many people here tonight, uh, friends and mentors and all the support is awesome. So thank you everyone for being here. Just a little bit about us. We aim to serve as a platform for Indigenous and non-Indigenous uh, University of Calgary students who are interested in promoting Indigenous engagement in STEAM, participating in learning opportunities um, meant to strengthen the on-campus community and also um, exploring professional development and learning opportunities as well. So our club was just founded this summer, so we're still new and we're enjoying the process of connecting with new members and supporters. And we're so thankful for the contributions and mentorship of all the people who have supported us in getting to this point as well. Our organization is open to both students and non-students, as well as indigenous people and non-indigenous allies. If you're interested in joining us, you can email communications.sisa at gmail.com. We'll post the email in the chat and we'd love to have you more involved. Um, so before we begin for tonight, I just want to thank our sponsors. So our diamond tier sponsor is TC Energy and our event sponsors are the Schulich School of Engineering and Cyber Mentor. If we have time at the end of Cheryl's teachings, she'll ask for your questions. You can send those to me in the Zoom chat and I'll read them out loud. So this event will be recorded. If you do choose to turn on your camera or submit a question in the chat, this constitutes consent for your video image or question to be shared uh, as a part of the recording. It's now my pleasure to introduce Cheryl Shangun Green Eyes, who is a member of the Muskeg Lake Cree Nation in Saskatchewan, which is a part of Treaty 6 and residing in Calgary, which is a part of Treaty 7. So Cheryl earned a BA in Communications as well as a BA in Canadian Native Studies from the University of Calgary. She's been an Indigenous activist within Calgary and area for the past decade, marching, singing, and drumming for women, missing and murdered women and girls and two-spirited people, Indigenous justice, championing for the environment, and speaking up for those who cannot. Cheryl retired from the Native Center at the University of Calgary and was the former leader of the Green Party of Alberta from 2018 to 2019. She provides service as a traditional knowledge keeper, sharing Indigenous protocols, territorial acknowledgements, prayer and ceremony upon request. She's also the mother of two, Cookham to two beautiful grandsons and step Cookham to two beautiful twin granddaughters. Uh, with that, Cheryl, I will pass the floor to you. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, my name is Cheryl Shanyo Gray Eyes. I have a beautiful Cree name. My Cree name is Nanantwe Esquai Obiyahu Kafimutate. I am healing woman who walks far. Also, I'm wearing a poppy today to honor uh, Aboriginal, aware, uh, Aboriginal Veterans Day, which was yesterday, and Remembrance Day, which is on the 11th. 
Um, I myself am a veteran. I was in the military. I uh, achieved the rank of corporal in the Air Force. I was a proud member of 418 Squadron, and I come from a line of military people. My dad was in the Air Force. My grandpa on my mom's side, my grandpa Mosho, Joseph Gray Eyes was in the Air Force, as was his uh, siblings as well. So I wear this beautiful beaded uh, poppy with pride. I wish to acknowledge that I am from Treaty 6. My home is uh, Muskeg Lake Cree Nation in Saskatchewan, but I've lived in Calgary since 1993. Calgary's my home. I need the hit of the mountain on a regular basis, so I'm very glad to be here. And I wish to acknowledge the fact that we are on the land of the Treaty 7 people. We are on the land of the Blackfoot from Siksika, Gainai, and Bikuni, the Nitsitapi people. We are on the land of the Dene, the Sarsi from Tsutsina. We are on the land of the Stony Nakoda people from Morley, Shinaki, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations. We walk in the footsteps of the Métis Nation of Alberta. Region 3 is here in Calgary. Calgary and Blackfoot is known as Mokinstis. Mokinstis means elbow, and it is the meeting, the confluence of the Bow and the Elbow River, Calgary, that we call our home. And I will be talking a little bit about Calgary in my sharings as well. I received my training from Kakakwe and Associates. I have level one and level two of the medicine wheel teachings. They are based in Regina, so these are Cree teachings. Um, I wish to share that these are my teachings. Um, I am blessed that I have received guidance from many elders, uh, Blackfoot, Cree, Ojibwe, Stoney, Navajo, and Sioux. I've been very, very blessed. And I wish to honor and thank these teachings that I have received along this journey this red road, as they call it, Aboriginal spirituality. I'm going to be sharing today with you uh, my PowerPoint that I made up uh, so that I can share these teachings in a good way. Um, some of these teachings will stay with you. Some of them will go right over your head, and that's okay. Don't be hard on yourself. Some of them, however, will come back to you, and those are the gifts, so pay attention for those gifts. Again, I come to you humbly and with respect with these teachings in a good way. And once I have gifted them to you, they are now yours. I would just humbly ask that you would say where you got your teachings from, if you share them. Um, much like doing your research and making sure your quoting is right when you're doing those papers. Make sure you've got your uh, um, uh, protocol accurate and you show respect and humility by where your teachings come. I wish to sing a song to welcome you in a good way. As I mentioned, I am Cree, and I've been singing on this road for about 15, maybe a little bit longer than that, a few years. And I wish to share a song to start this off in a good way. And this song I wish to share is known as Mia Sin. Mia Sin means beautiful in Cree. And I wish to honor your beautiful spirit, your attention that you are giving to this teaching, this learning. I wish to honor you and to welcome you because with the sharing, we share this knowledge and we are a community within ourselves. Normally when I sing my songs, I sing them in rounds of four to honor the teachings of the medicine wheel. But this song, I'll be singing in three rounds with purpose and intent to include each and every one of you in this teaching and in this learning and growing. This song is from Joseph Nedohei from Sturgeon River in Treaty 6 ter uh, territory as well. So I honor my relative who has gifted me with this song. This is Mia Sin, the Cree welcome song. Mia Sin, Mia Sin, Asemina. Asamina epe takote iwa no magan. O ta, o ma, ki kaskino. Mia sen, mia a semina, a semina, he 
petakote iwa no maga o ta o ma ki kasino mi asen mi asen a Welcome, and thank you to the members of the STEAM committee for inviting me and welcoming me in to this Zoom space that we're sharing right now. Speaking of sharing, I'm going to share my screen with you. All right, let's see if I can do this. All right, how do I open this now? I'll go from the beginning. There we go. Can everybody see my screen okay? Am I good? Okay. Um, as I mentioned, I am from Muskeg Lake Cree Nation and I wanted to honor the fact that we are on the land of the Treaty 7 people. The medicine wheel is a teaching tool, first and foremost, and it's about balance and moderation. And uh, there is no right or wrong way, recognize that, to look at the medicine wheel. Again, these are my teachings. So I'm teaching it from my way. It is a symbol which expresses and represents meanings which provide purpose and understanding in our lives. The medicine wheel reminds us to keep ourselves in balance, healthy, whole. It reminds us to live our lives in moderation, not too much or too little of anything. It shows us that it's all good. We are to accept and respect ourselves and others, and that we are perfect right now in this moment. There are many different interpretations and views regarding medicine wheel teachings, just as there are many ways of looking at an object placed in the center of a circle. If we are sitting on the outside looking in, if we all described what we saw, everyone would see different points of view. Some would even see opposites because they would be sitting on opposite sides of the circle. You don't have to see what I see for you to be right. Everyone in the circle is right based on their point of view. Please note there is no right way or wrong way to view the medicine wheel. Whatever makes it easier for you as an individual, as a family, as a community, as a nation to grasp truth, lessons and learnings, that is the right way for you. So be kind to yourself. I'm showing you what I see and sharing my view, my interpretations and my learnings. And I come humbly and respectfully to share those in a good way. This medicine wheel, you may recognize it is from, it is the Blackfoot Consecrated Medicine Wheel from up on Nose Hill. If you go up the east side of Nose Hill Park, you will come to the top of the hill facing south towards the city. This medicine wheel was consecrated in 2015 and I have a story to share about this medicine wheel. I have been doing Jane's walks up on Nose Hill sharing medicine wheel teachings since 2015. I was asked to do the first one back in May of 2015. And I looked all over the hill, and this is where I was drawn. We had our first circle just up this hill. Came back the next year to do another circle, only to discover that where we had had our circle the year before, our sharing circle, 
was exactly the same place that they had placed the medicine wheel. So uh, I was a little, little bit shocked <laughs> and not quite ready when I saw this, but we sat next to it. And then when we came again for 2017, I was ready. And I was able to share the teachings of this medicine wheel. This Blackfoot medicine wheel represents the Blackfoot Confederacy. It's uh, Dainai, Bagani, North Bagani, and Sisika. And you can make offerings up there with tobacco. And I'll talk more about that. But we have a medicine wheel right here in Calgary that you can visit ourselves. We're very lucky that way. And I like to share that. And we are surrounded by history. We are surrounded by history being made. And this is a reflection of the people of this land. The medicine wheel, it starts with a center. You are the center of your medicine wheel. When I think of the medicine wheel, I think of creator as a source, that center spot, that life, that consciousness. You are the individual. Without a center point, there is no circle. If you used a compass to make those circles in school, same thing. You're scientists. You know how to use a compass. You have to have that center point to be able to draw your radius and make your circle. The circle, the center, is where true power resides. Love, principles, justice, spiritual knowledge, life, forgiveness, truth. Powers which reside in the very center of the human being. Powers which we access by being still and quieting the mind. If we become afraid, get confused or emotionally upset. If we become resentful, angry, indignant, righteous, the best thing we can do is pray to the creator. Ask for these obstacles to be removed from our path so that we are automatically positioned in the sacred center once again. The circle represents all that is, ever was, and will be. All creation, the never-ending circle of life and living. Life, the circle, is a, me is a measurement with no beginning and no end. If we sit in a circle and listen to everyone's point of view, we get a more accurate truth, knowing. This is the way to put our minds together, to get clarity from one another, to appreciate one another, to honor and respect one another. The circle shows us that we are all connected, that everything is connected and interdependent. All my relations means that we are one with everything and everyone. All things have a spirit and we honor and respect all. The grandfather and grandmother rocks, the standing people, the plants, the plant nation, the four-legged, the winged ones, the animals that swim, the oceans living beings, the creepy crawlies, and of course, our two-legged cousins. The medicine wheel has an inside and an outside of a circle. There are some characteristics that are evident in the system which the creator made. He made balance, harmony, and polarity. The inside and the outside of the circle. The dichotomy of life. In other words, every positive has a negative. Every plus has a minus. Up, down, black, white. There is right and wrong, past and future, love and fear. And the spiritual law is the same. It has light and dark. Both are good. So both need to be honored and respected. Lessons can be learned on both sides. And every problem has a solution. Some people call this balance karma. And the key is to maintain balance, to maintain equilibrium. 
And when you find yourself out of whack, come back to the center, come back to the beginning, come back to stillness. <clears throat> North, east, south, west, the medicine wheel teachings. Each of the four directions has special powers. These powers are the grandfathers that are there to help us. The powers are from the east where the sun rises, the warm breezes of the south, the setting sun of the west, and the cold winds of the north. To call upon these powers, we need to stand in the center and face each direction, ready to call the helpers. It is said when the student is ready, the teacher appears. If we are to make ourselves ready and open to receive spirit, we need to always get quiet first. We do this by honoring and praying to the four directions. The medicine wheel allows us to see the interconnectedness of nature the transition of the four seasons, the never ending cycle of beginning and ending, beginning and ending, spring, summer, fall, winter. Spring is a time of birth and growth, the gradual warming and awakening of mother earth, new beginnings, light and lengthening days. Summer is a time of warmth and heat, long sunny days, Luscious growth, luscious growth and abundance. Fall is a time of harvest, fruition, gratitude, longer night times, a time of preparation. And winter, like what we have outside right now, is when nature sleeps. The cold winds come, the darkness settles in, the animals hibernate and rest. The creator designed all life to happen in a circle. The cycle of life for the human being is represented by the East as the baby, just like the rising sun that started a new life. And the North is the elder, sorry, sorry the wrong way. South is the youth, West is the adult and North is the elder. The leaves bud, then mature, change color, and fall off the tree to Mother Earth. The birds struggle out of their shells, grow to adulthood, mate, and bear their young, then migrate home. The salmon are born, swim to the ocean, live their lives, and then swim back to their spawning grounds, then die. The medicine wheel teaches us how Creator made things and how to live. It teaches us how we should look at creation as life that travels in a circle. Then we return to the Mother Earth to start the cycle again. All aspects of the life cycle should be honored. When we make decisions in the indigenous way, we consider seven generations back. What will my ancestors think of the choices I'm making today? And we think, seven generations ahead. How will my choices today impact my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, seven generations into the future? When we know we are part of that cycle, that is our responsibility, to be respectful to those who have come before, and to make good choices for those who have yet to be born. These are families. This is where we are. We have that connection in our blood. Various animals are often represented by the medicine wheel. And here is but one interpretation of the symbolic nature of some of our relations. Again, please note there's no right way or wrong way 
to look at the medicine wheel is what it means to you. I have reasons that I believe and follow these animals specifically. In the East, the eagle represents vision, clarity, truth, dreams, and justice. Eagles, take our prayers up to Creator. To receive an eagle's wing is a great honor. To receive an eagle feather in ceremony is a great gift and a great honor. When I graduated from the University of Calgary, I was blessed with a beautiful blessed and dressed eagle feather during the powwow. I cling to that and I'll be sharing that with you today. The wolf represents respect, clarity, sorry, family, cooperation, consideration, strength, and kindness. A wolf usually hunts in packs. It's about the family. They take time to play. They take time to hunt. They take time to sleep. And they travel together. It's about togetherness and being there for one another. And the wolf is represented in this house. I think of the family as being warm and loving when I think of the wolf. The buffalo is steadfast, determined, heading into the winter storm when others run. Because the buffalo knows by heading into the storm, he gets through the storm faster. The buffalo is strong faithful, persevering. The buffalo for me is represented by the West, by the mountains, by that strength and that connection to earth. For me, the North, I think of the bear. The bear is fearless, strong, courageous, dependable, wise, and patient. When I think of the North, I think of the polar bear. And the polar bear is endangered now because our Arctic is melting. All of our animals are our relations. They need our prayer and our love and our energy to keep them in our hearts. We are stewards of this planet. We do not have dominion and these are our relatives, the people that we share this planet with, the animals, all of our relations. There is no right way or wrong way to place animals on the medicine wheel, just so you know. It is a personal choice or shared with your community or your nation, whatever works best to help you connect, to understand, to remember is the right way. So again, be kind to yourself. The medicine wheel teaches us to balance our lives emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. If I am out of control emotionally, I get tearful, angry, doubtful, erratic, filled with fear. If I am out of balance, I think bad thoughts of my sisters and my brothers. If I am out of balance physically, if I don't pray and talk to our creator daily, I'm out of balance spiritually. To be centered must be in balance. The creator talks to me in the quiet and still space. So if I get angry or afraid, pause, get still, to hear the guidance of the grandfathers. Choose the energy you choose to protect. Choose the energy you choose to give. When you wake up in the morning, this is something I wish to share and I'd like you to do. You pray 
Thank you, creator, for blessings received. You be grateful. When you hit the hay at night, thank you, creator, for my bed, for the house that I'm in, the roof over my head, food in my belly. Living in gratitude, living in love. Those are the two strongest vibrations. And when you go to that place, it helps you on that healing journey. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Speak kindly to yourself. Speak kindly to others. I want to share the medicines with you. And I've brought them here. I'm going to be doing a, a smudge as well. I want to talk to you about the medicines. <clears throat> The medicine wheel represents the balance and the gifts of the sacred medicine. The south, oh sorry, sage, which I know as the east. I think of it as the east because I see the east as being representative of the rising sun, the giver of life, the woman. Sage is the woman's medicine. Sage rises from the east and is noted by yellow. In the south, we have cedar, which is denoted by red. I remember it as the warm south winds. That's how I remember cedar. Sweetgrass, I think of the west of the mountains, the strength of the mountains. For sweetgrass is the men's medicine. So I think of the men, the strong mountains as a sweetgrass and the black of the earth and the dirt. However, just a little note here. If you are giving prints, flags, cloth, and you're in a Blackfoot ceremony, don't get black. Replace it with green or red or blue, no, green or blue, uh, brown, another color, um, because black has negative connotations in the Blackfoot culture. However, ask. When in doubt, ask and ask what is acceptable. And when I think of tobacco, the most sacred medicine of all, creator's cell phone, I call it, I think of the north. I think of creator, and we talk to creator, and the color white, for that is where all color starts, is with the color white. That is where all prayer starts, is with tobacco. So we honor that tobacco. These medicines, We've got tobacco, sweetgrass, cedar, sage, our sacred. This sage that I'm going to be sharing with you today was picked up on Nose Hill. And we pick it in women's ceremony each September. This year it was done virtually. Yay, Carrie. She managed to do that virtually. Carrie Moore is the, um, uh, the knowledge keeper and elder at Riding On Simples uh, not, uh, Center, Riding Simples Lodge, Riding Simples Lodge. And we go up there uh, as a group of women every year. This year I went up twice. Um, the first time we ended up going with about 15 women. And uh, the sage was very plentiful. And we do it in ceremony. And there's a teaching here. We always offer tobacco whenever we take anything from Mother Earth. And I'll be giving more teachings about that. But when we pick sage, we offer tobacco. We ask Creator for permission to pick the sage. Creator knows what's in our heart. Thank you, Creator, for blessings received. And we take that pinch of tobacco and sprinkle it on the ground. We thank Mother Earth for the gift of her bounty. Thank you, Mother Earth, for the gift of your bounty. And then we do it in ceremony, picking it away. And you never pick it all. You pick a third of what you need, of what is there. And when you pick sage in a good way, you break it off at the roots. So the roots stay under the ground and it can come back. And it comes back more plentifully. And I can say this anecdotally, when we started doing 
the sage picking up on Nose Hill back, oh my goodness, well over 10 years ago. And we did it in ceremony with tobacco. There was a little bit of a sage on one hill. Now when you go to Nose Hill, it is covered in sage. Within about six years, four hills were covered in sage. So it was picked in the right way, in a sustainable way, as Indigenous people have been doing for millennia. This sage that we're looking at right now is known as buffalo sage, and that's what I'll be using in my smudge. Up on Nose Hill is buffalo sage. There's also prickly sage and uh, another type of sage, I'm not sure what it is. Um, another sage that other people use besides a buffalo sage is um, white sage, which we get from the United States or Southern BC. Uh, that's a little bit different. It's more of a uh, deserty smell, kind of a dry smell. Beautiful, beautiful sage. So um, it really doesn't matter what type of sage it is. And yes, you can use it in cooking. It's very good and tricky stuff. <laughs> So that's sage. This is cedar. Cedar is known as the healing medicine, self medicine. When I think of cedar, I think of um, Buckley's. You know why it tastes so bad? Because it's got cedar in it, and cedar is a healing medicine, and it'll also clean you right up. If you're ever constipated, a little bit of cedar tea, poof, no problem anymore. Cedar is also used in many, many indigenous cultures as a part of ceremony, as a protector. Um, I've been in Sundance where they put the cedar on the floor of the teepee and you sleep on top of the cedar so that it protects mother earth and you are sleeping on a beautiful bed of cedar. They use cedar in sweat lodge quite often to splash the water. And again, it gives that wonderful healing gift. Cedar can be burned as well. Uh, that's why I have it in my medicine. So there's sage and cedar that we can burn so far that we know of. And this cedar, I'm very blessed. I have a cedar tree right in front of my house. So I'm really lucky to have cedar right here. Again, when you pick cedar, you offer tobacco. Thank you, Creator, for blessings received. And you put the tobacco down at the base of the plant. Thank you, Mother Earth. Thank you, my beautiful standing people, for this gift received. And then, and you only take what you need, you never take it all. In the east, or in the west, I think of those mountains. I think of the men's medicine. This is sweet grass. I come from Muskeg, and we don't have plentiful sage. We use sweet grass a lot. And I know up in Edmonton, there is a church that is known as Sacred Heart Catholic Church. It's my mother's church. My mother's 89 and a raging. And when you walk into this specific Catholic church, instead of being greeted with holy water, you normally you would dip your hand in the holy water and do the name of the cross, uh, the sign of the cross. Instead, you are greeted when you enter this church with someone holding a smudge bowl and you smudge yourself with, with uh, sweet grass when you come in. So the whole church smells like this beautiful sweet grass and it permeates every single corner. And it is because plant sweetgrass is much more plentiful up north than sage is. It's good to share medicines. You'll see it often uh, in braids. And when these braids are done, they are done in uh, seven strands each. So you have three strands of seven each, which are sacred. And they represent the seven sacred teachings. And the seven sacred teachings are courage, honesty, humility, love, truth, respect, and wisdom. And the three of them put together are the balance of your mind, your body, and your heart. So that when you burn sweet grass, it is as a medicine, as a sacred prayer, sending your your uh, um, prayers up to creator. And what do you do if you're like me and sweetgrass challenged and you can't pick it? I'm going to talk about what do you do when you can't pick medicine and you're forced to buy it. What you would do 
as you would share. But I'll talk more about that in a bit. So this is sweetgrass represented in the West. This is tobacco, full leaf tobacco. If you want to impress an elder, give them full leaf tobacco. They love it. But please know there's no right way or wrong way to gift tobacco. It is the significance of the tobacco. When you gift tobacco, as these ladies, when they met with me, gifted me tobacco, it is from your heart, the person that's gifting it to you, to creator, creating a sacred covenant. And it is very sacred. And it's important to carry tobacco with you, and I'll share this as well. When I had done the medicine wheel teachings up on Nose Hill, there was a young lady there and two children. And we became friends on Facebook, and she shared a story with me. Because I had taught them that you never take anything from Mother Earth without first asking for permission, giving thanks, and laying down tobacco. Well, the kids got it. They went out to Elbow River Falls, and the little boy runs ahead, and he picks up a rock, and he, oh, I love this rock, and he shoves it in his pocket. And his sister comes up behind him, crosses her arms. Did you make an offering for that rock? She was totally right. And he was panicked. He says, no, no, I didn't. And he looks around furtively, and he takes off his shoe, and he throws his shoe into Elbow Falls. And his mother's like, oh, no. So it was a learning for the mother. And she now carries tobacco on her person, in her purse, and in the car. And the kids know to ask. So yes, carry tobacco with you, just in case. You never know when you're going to come across a beautiful patch of sage, sweetgrass, flowers, water, something beautiful that you may need to put down. So this is what tobacco looks like. Tobacco, by the way, was never meant to be ingested. Never. When we do pipe ceremony, we take that smoke and we fill our cheeks with it. You don't inhale. But you do that so it gets your essence. Can we say DNA? When they take a cheek swap, same thing. And you take that smoke and you smudge yourself from your head all the way down your toe. And you do that four times on each side of your body. Pipe smoke was never meant to be ingested, but it was precious when you put it in your mouth and put your essence into it. So it was never meant to be ingested. And it makes a really good fertilizer. So keep it with you in your car. When we're talking about this smudge bowl, I'm going to be sharing with you what I have been taught with. And the reason why is that when I do my smudge, it is ceremony. And it brings together these four sacred pieces of the medicine wheel. The medicine wheel reminds us that we have everything we need to survive and thrive right here, right now. We are to be grateful for the gift of each and every day. We need water to survive. Our bodies are over 60% water, and we would die of thirst far sooner than die of hunger. We need to keep our water clean. Most people suffer dehydration, especially here in Calgary, and don't even know it. It's so dry here. We should drink at least two liters of water per day, per day to maintain good health and body balance. And think about all of the reserves across Canada that don't have access to fresh water. That is a human right to have water. Be grateful for our water, that we can turn on a tap and have water gifted to us right there. That we live in a country, a beautiful city, where we have water, fresh, clean water. Even more vital is the air that we breathe. How long can you hold your breath? Okay, everybody? I want you to hold your breath. Okay, ready? <gasps> I'm done. <laughs> um, yeah, you can't go without air, okay? We need air, and we need clean air good air to survive. 
This presentation is called Clearing the Air. And I want to talk about the advantage of clearing the air when we smudge. We need clean air to live. The earth is our mother, the soil of the standing people. And our mother provides sustenance for all of her creatures on this planet. We need to respect the earth and treat it with humility and respect and love and not as a garbage pit. We need to take good care of our planet. The earth is our mother. As a human species, we need fire to keep warm, to cook our food, power our appliances, to light the darkness, conduct our ceremonies, to run our computers and our phones, we need fire. The fire of life resides in each and every one of us, the spark of life. When we do a smudging ceremony, we have, I use a shell, and I'm going to be talking about that. And the reason why the shell represents the water, the mother. And when you put your medicine, in this case, I'm going to be using sage, into the earth, into the shell, this water container, it represents earth. And when you spark it with a wooden match, there is your fire. And then as the spirit of the medicine comes up as smoke, there is your air. So it's a balance of water, earth, fire, and air when you do smudge. And it is a balance. It's also a dichotomy between women, the water sign, fire, the man sign, that come together to create something bigger than both of them, just as we are bigger than both of our parents. It's very gestalt that we do this here. So I'm going to be cutting away to do the smudging ceremony, if that's okay. Here we go. Hello, back. I have my little smudge tree here. Um, this is sage that has been picked up on Nose Hill, sweet grass that has been gifted to me by my daughter, tobacco tie that was gifted to me by another uh, group, and cedar that was picked out in front of my house. This here is my smudge bowl. It is an abalone shell that I was gifted and have used for about eight years. Underneath my smudge bowl, I have this. It's a brass, brass ashtray. And what happens is a smudge bowl can get very hot. So you put this here to protect whatever's underneath it. And I say that because I was with a friend who did not have something underneath there. And she had lit her sage and it burned and burned and burned. And when she lifted up her bowl, it had burned a hole right through her Pendleton blanket that she'd had it laid on. Pendleton blankets are expensive. They're like 450 bucks. So use an ashtray, metal, glass, whatever you prefer. If someone makes it for you, great. Other people use other things. Um, I know where I come from, they use um, uh, little cast iron pans. And they'll often use, uh, as I said, sweet grass. Um, so you use little press iron pans, you can use buckets, you can use an ashtray, a uh, ceramic rock, um, or actually a flat rock as well. So it's not really the container. The more natural, the better. We ask that you would light it with uh, wooden matches, <clears throat> which are more natural. But having said that, there's no right or wrong way to have a smudge. And if all you got is a lighter, all you got is a lighter. So it's, it's about the prayers that come with it. But it's just preference to use the most natural ingredients. Um, I wanted to mention to you that when you have to purchase medicines, what do you do? I'll share a lesson that I received. Early in my journey, I was complaining to my elder. And I said, my smudge stick won't burn. My smudge stick won't burn. And she looked at me. And she just said with this withering look, you bought it, didn't you? I said, yeah. She said, give it to me. I said, oh, okay. So I gave my smudge stick to her. 
and she lit it and it started right up and it wouldn't burn for me. And I even said that it wouldn't burn for me. And she said, you didn't have the right intent in your medicine. When I gave it to her, I gifted it and it had the right intent in it. That's why it wouldn't burn for me. So what do you do when you need medicine and you have to actually break down and buy it? Well, my daughter and I have a system. She will go to Muscochis. I'll go with her. She'll buy 10 braids of sweet grass. I think it's $4 a braid there. I'll buy 10 braids of sweet grass. We will go out to the parking lot and we will have a ceremony out in the parking lot. And I will stand in front of her. She'll stand in front of me and I'll take my 10 braids of sweet grass. Thank you, Creator. Blessings received. And I offer them to her four times like this with prayer. Thank you, Mother Earth. Thank you, the elders. Thank you. Blessings received. And then I will give them to her. And she'll take the sweet grass and hold it to her heart. Thank you, Creator, for blessings received. Thank you, Mother Earth, for the gifts of bounty. Thank you for the gifts of teachings and four directions. Thank you for blessings received. And now we have put the right intent into that medicine. So if you have to go shopping, go with a friend and have ceremony and share your medicines in a good way. And you will have the right intent in your medicine. It's a little bit different with tobacco because tobacco is a controlled substance in this country. Um, and uh, we can usually buy it at the nearest 7-Eleven. But if there is some way you can hang on to tobacco that has been gifted to you and use that or buy it to keep in your car because then when you gift it, you're giving it to Mother Earth. So there's some little, little tidbits of information if you're having your own smudge. Um, as I mentioned, I have sweet grass as well. All of the four medicines are around my smudge bowl. I want to share how I use sage. This sage has been picked in a good way up on Nose Hill and I leave it on the stem. This is my teaching from Carrie Moore. And the reason why is when I pull the leaves off the stem, I've put my medicine, my intent, my energy into the, into the uh, and my thoughts and my consciousness into the medicine. And then I would roll it, putting my thoughts into it. And then I would put it in the smudge bowl and light it with a wooden mat. Some people choose to leave the wooden match in there and that's quite all right. Do not blow. This is my eagle feather, the one that I received from graduating. You can use a feather to blow your smudge. Don't use your breath. Breath was a gift from creator. It's one of the first gifts we got when we came into this planet. This is medicine that's coming up. So I have my water, my earth, my fire, and my air. All four items, teachings of the medicine wheel are right here in this much bowl that I'm using here. This is white sage that was from the States that was gifted to me. Sweet grass. Great. And this is my cedar that I have cut and ready to use in my prayers. There's tobacco here that has been gifted to me. This is loose tobacco. I also have um, a package that has been wrapped. Traditionally, if you're gifting it something to someone, it's good to wrap it in red cloth or another cloth. Another cloth, just to show respect. And of course, this is a tobacco tie. So there's no right or wrong way to give tobacco. A cigarette is just fine. It's the intent because it shows that it's coming from your heart to the person you're giving it to, to create. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful to share this time with you. And do we have any questions? Anybody?
Hang on a second. Yeah, there we go. Can you hear me? Hi, yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, I don't see any questions on there. Were there any? Yeah, we have one question. And the question is, are there any medicines that you can't use on moon time? Pardon me? The question is, are there any medicines that you can't use on moon time? Oh, okay. Um, in some teachings, um, basically people are, are, women are asked not to touch medicines when they're in a mixed ceremony if they're on their time. And there's a reason why. Uh, when a woman is on her time, when she's menstruating, she is going through her own ceremony. Her body is going through this ceremony. She's much more intuitive and spirit is drawn to her because they know that they'll, she'll hear their prayers. She'll hear their talkings. And so they're more likely to go to a woman uh, who is, is on her time. So out of respect and perfectly honestly, pity for men, we uh, refrain from joining ceremony when we're on our time. Uh, and that's so that the men can have the opportunity to uh, gain in prayers as well. Uh, it's not that it's a dirty, it's not that, it's just that woman is very, very strong when she's on her time. And when she reaches menopause, she reaches that high level of intuition and stays there. So like me, when you get to be an old crone, you're at that level and you're, you're really intuitive and um, more than a little telepathic to be perfectly honest, just so you know. Um, but as I was saying about the teachings, some say don't touch medicines, especially sweetgrass, uh, which is considered the men's medicine, unless it's your own personal sweetgrass. Or, or for me, I carry demonstration braids with that very intent. Um, sage, however, is considered the women's medicine. In my teachings, pre-teachings, we are allowed to use sage um, when we're on our time. And if we're in women's ceremony, uh, we appreciate someone coming who's on their time because then it adds to the women's ceremony. So it's actually a plus to have a woman come who's on her time when it's women's ceremony. But again, you have to check with the others. Whatever they say goes. Um, I know myself, I have been in Sundance when a woman has, has started to spot and she's put up on the hill and she's considered sacred because now she's bringing all this wonderful protection to all the people who are partaking in the Sundance, just as an example of the strength of a woman when she's on her time. Good question. Thank you. I appreciate that, Jess. Any other questions out there? Yeah, so the next question is, what is said during smudging? What is? Said. What is spoken? Oh, oh, the advantage. Hello, it's clearing the air. That's why we're here. In 2004, there was a, a study done in Maryland, University of Maryland, and um, they wanted to check out smudging. So they measured the bacteria, viruses, uh, spores, and mildew in the air and then they smudged the room and they measured those levels again. And that room, the air in that room was 97% clean. So they closed the door and left it for 30 days, went back in, measured those levels again. It was still 90% clean. So when we're talking about reducing airborne bacteria, we get to smudge our house. And when people smudge, it's about, um, Cleansing, cleansing your mind, cleansing your heart, cleansing your body, cleansing your air, cleansing that wonderful energy around you, getting rid of those negative vibes and putting out positive vibes. We knew all about aromatherapy with smudging long, long ago and how it relaxes you. And when you come into a place and you smell a certain smell, it just lowers your vibration. And clearing the air, you can use smudge to clear the air in your home. Yes, I was very asthmatic. Smudge doesn't bother me. Uh, my kids had asthma issues. Smudge never bothered them. Um, however, you be kind. If you want to do smudging, you check around and make sure it's okay. Some places don't allow any smoking in a house, so you have to do your smudging outside. Um, however, if you can smudge your house, smudge your house. Um, people will often ask, come and smudge my house. Can you bless my house? But what I will do is I will bring them a smudge kit and teach them how to do it. And what you do when you smudge your house is you start in the farthest, lowest point on the east side of the house. And then you go clockwise 
and do that floor and do the second floor and third floor. And if you can possibly go outside your house and do all the way around the outside of the house, always going clockwise. I hope that helps and gives you some advice. Are there any more questions or how are we doing for time? We're at 7.30, so if you'd like to wrap up, you can. Um, we do have more questions, but there's quite a few, so. Okay, well, I'm just gonna end it with a song, if that's okay. I'd like to sing the Four Directions song because we talked about the Four Medicine Meals. So this is Wunda Yahoo, the Four Directions song. Thank you. the opportunity to share ladies and gentlemen i'm very grateful i have thank you so much cheryl thank you to everyone for coming um the recording of the session will be made available after so you can follow us on social media to learn more about that and as well anything in the chat that you sent that we didn't have time to get to i will pass along to cheryl and we just want to thank you all for your time and as well for being so engaged in the chat. Uh, thank you all. Have a great night. Thank you. Uh, there's also a survey posted in the chat and I'll send it in an email afterwards for everyone to fill out to, for you to let us know how we did. Masicho.